Symbology 101 If a picture is worth a thousand words, then a symbol is worth a thousand pictures. Symbolism is a noun and by definition means the art or practice of using symbols, especially by investing things with the symbolic meaning, or by expressing the invisible or intangible by means of visible or sensuous representation. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 8 The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world. First and foremost, I am Tim, and this is Symbology 101. Symbology 101 will serve as a preliminary introduction to the topic of symbolism. One aspect of this introduction will include displays of and discussion on very common examples and practical applications using symbols. Some of what we'll go over may be familiar to you already in some capacity. My objective with this video series is to help us not just look at this subject, but see what there is to see. Another element of the video will be a theme of taking a level-headed approach with balance as we explore the expressive language of symbolism and the hidden values within. Before we begin, now may be a good time to pause the video and pray for protection and discernment. Quote, Perception is strong and sight weak. In strategy, it is important to see distant things as if they were close and to take a distanced view of close things. End quote. Miyamoto Musashi by definition, a symbol is something that stands for or suggests something else by reason of relationship, association, convention, or accidental resemblance, especially a visible sign of something invisible. Correlation does not equal causation, but patterns of association often lead to more discerning perspectives when examining the usage of symbolism. Clearly, symbolism is often applied purposefully and with intent in various cases as we will see. However, on the other hand, symbolism is also frequently exercised unintentionally as well. Due to the fact that symbolic language and expression is explicitly open to a variety of interpretive values, for example, the opportunity to miscalculate is considerably high. Consequently, discerning the potential intent and cause of manifesting representative symbolism poses a variety of challenges in determining with any real certainty the true meaning and value of such figurative objects of study, materially and especially spiritually. Preservation of objectivity is paramount throughout the entire process. The challenge is maintaining the ability to be rational and logical while scrutinizing symbolic images and gestures to uncover the underlying deeper meanings and values. One of the biggest issues faced during the execution of the process is not giving or feeding into presumptions or presuppositions. Rod Serling quote from the end of Twilight Zone Season 1, Episode 22, The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, Quote, The tools of conquest do not necessarily come with bombs and explosions and fallout. There are weapons that are simply thoughts, attitudes, prejudices, to be found only in the minds of men. For the record, prejudices can kill, and suspicion can destroy, and a thoughtless, frightened search for a scapegoat has a fallout all of its own, for the children, and the children yet unborn. And the pity of it is, that these things cannot be confined to the twilight zone. Most people do not realize that when they perceive images with their eyes, 
The brain stores that visual information away, regardless of the state of awareness towards what was or was not consciously observed. Typically, people store and process information within the brain, generally with the sub and unconscious mind inside of a visual memory after the fact of being stimulated. Interestingly enough, the process of data collection and analysis within the psyche has some particularly perplexing psychological, emotional, and spiritual implications to consider, especially while investigating the causes and effects synchronized to the original intentions and purposes behind such information. A vast majority of symbols and gestures are interpreted in a variety of different ways. Symbolism and body language are both naturally and intrinsically subject to more than one value and interpretation. For that reason alone, exercising the rational abilities that God gave us to think critically toward any topic or example of focus, while yet still using our spiritual gifts to discern in the spirit, will therefore be critically important in order to hold any legitimacy to our inquiries. Actually, a considerable amount of symbols are encoded logically with the Hegelian strategy of problem, reaction, and solution. For this reason, it is important not to feed into the emotions invoked by provocative imagery and the potential meanings behind any particular symbols, because that may be the purpose of the coders all along. Quote, It may be said with a degree of assurance, that not everything that meets the eye is as it appears." End quote. Rod Serling again. As we explore symbolism, frequently we will find multiple representations resembling or even imitating in an exceptionally similar manner the real exemplifications of comparative expression. That is to say, there will never be a substitute for the genuine article. Something will always mean what it is designed to mean or represent. However, that does not stop the thing from meaning other things or representing more than what is intrinsically obvious. I may sound like Captain Obvious here, but it takes much less effort to discover the imposters as you become more familiar with the genuine articles. No matter how many imposters we come across, there can be only one real Mr. T. There will almost certainly be an exoteric definition, which is an interpretation suitable for broad consumption by the masses, used for an open understanding of symbolic expressions. Do not be fooled by the exoteric meanings and values of the mimics and diversionary values for countless symbols and gestures. Decoys and enticing definitions may be appropriated to certain images or gestures, but let us not be so quick to jump to our conclusions. The devil lies comparatively more often in the details than just simply floating atop the surface of perception. Quote, there are things known, and there are things unknown, and in between are the doors of perception." End quote. Aldous Huxley By penetrating that superficial and shallow surface of meaning and value within our perceptions, we can then begin to explore the esoteric components and significance underlying the true designs and purposes being implemented through symbolism. The esoteric values of symbolic expression will only be understood by a select, initiated, or well-studied few. The esoteric meanings will vary from inner circle to inner circle for groups implementing symbolism for a purpose with hidden intent. This extra layer of hidden or esoteric value makes it extremely difficult, from example to example, to estimate a proper meaning beyond the exoteric without adequate context for the instances in question. This is the part where we have to be wise as serpents. One archetypal symbol we can discuss to begin with, for example, is the Walt Disney logo. The Walt Disney logo has within its design hidden information encoded in a number of different ways. 
There is clearly a 666 to be deciphered from this classic logo, rather it be in the Walt Disney version or the more modern Solo Disney version of the logo image. Of course, the loopy nature of the handwriting style lends itself to multiple overlaps that could therefore be interpreted symbolically as sixes or nines, which could be turned upside down for a hidden value of six. To be honest, anyone who wanted to discover 666 encoded in a word or name written in this font would not find that difficult of a time. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, was this encoded information designed to be there on purpose, or did it incidentally happen to be there by chance? We have already admitted that the chances or probability of finding a 666 is considerably high based on the visual characteristics of this type and style of script, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been imagineered to be there on purpose by design. In order to gather our own information with our own observations, we need to take a deeper look at the actual facts before drawing any conclusions. In order to detect and discern the presence of purpose, we deliberate upon the best and most accurate information we can gather from as many credible sources as possible. The more direct a source or connection, the more meaningful the suggestion of evidence becomes. For instance, Straight away, here we can see that the first half of the W in Walt plays as the first six, and some say the curl in the T of Walt is the second six, and others say it's the D for Disney backwards. When Disney as a logo is used by itself, the D functions as a backward six, but I believe as far as the Walt Disney logo is concerned, that the second six is clearly the dot of the I within Disney. And finally, the Y in Disney is the third six. I would normally be more dismissive or skeptical of such an example. However, Disney has added subliminal messages into their creations and products since its founding. The underlying messages and morals within most of the Disney tales are rebellious towards the God I serve and his word. With the history like that, I can't help but to want to look a little bit more closely at the legitimacy of this suggestive speculation. If you look at the Walt Disney logo name compared to Walt's actual signature, you will find something very peculiar and interesting. And that is that they do not match. And this indicates that the logo is just that, a logo time, attention, and a whole lot of money go into branding and logo design. Marketing is one of the most important, profiting aspects of a company like Disney. I cannot believe that the specific information of 666 is encoded merely by accident or chance in these cases. Yet this is merely suggestive truth, and we see this suggestive evidence supported by pattern. This analysis and criticism would be uncalled for if it were merely an isolated event here or there. However, this is a case of a long-term and wide-scale pattern. Disney's content has been systematically increasing in opposition to God throughout the decades. The Disney influence is far-reaching and exceedingly deceptive in capability to breach the senses of even the most fortified of defenses. And it's not just Disney openly rolling with the devil these days. Sadly, there are many companies using evil imagery either with intent on purpose or out of spiritually blind ignorance. Jim Bean's product line called The Devil's Cut is just one epitome of an example. The company's use of some very satanic imagery was not at all subtle. No longer is this imagery even hidden in plain sight, as you can clearly see in this instance. Other examples may be a bit more obfuscated and require more analysis with discernment, but one notable example would be the energy drink company Monster. One of their slogans is, Unleash the Beast and the primary image of their logo is three, usually green, claw marks. 
Interestingly enough, the visual aspect of the monster's claw marks ripping through the can reinforces and visually conveys the message of unleashing the beast. Arguably, there are a few additional things to point out here. First thing to point out is another encoded 666. The green claw marks have an unnatural pattern to begin with, starting from the top. A normal claw mark would pierce and penetrate, then tear downwards to create a fairly straight claw mark. This logo's claw marks start to puncture, tear up and to the right, then rip downwards. This unnatural claw mark seems to, fittingly, match the sixth consonant of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, the Vav. The Vav has a phonetic value in the English language of W or V. As it is in reading and writing Hebrew, the count assigning numeric values to the letters begins from right to left. This method of alphanumerical encoding and deciphering actually has a name, which you may have heard of before. It's called gematria. So relatively connecting the Hebrew letter to the number 6 to the English letters W and V is not quite the stretch of imagination as it may initially appear or sound. I normally would be skeptical of this type of interpretive analysis, but there are too many dots within this pattern that connect to leave this application strictly to chance. On this monster logo we see the Hebrew Vav, and its visual characteristics used three times symbolically as monster claw marks unleashing the beast. This logo would equate to 666 alphanumerically and has the slogan to match the symbolism. So think, in order to unleash the beast within, a monster gives a symbolic claw mark of 666 to tear through the surface or flesh. Now what an interesting message encoded symbolically within the product design, packaging, and logo of an advertising theme for, of all things, an energy drink. I also believe that the use of V's or W's threefold for the value of 666 is used in more instances than we would realize, especially in conjunction with the winged solar disk imagery. The winged sun or solar disk is very ancient and holds many deep, significant values as a symbol across many cultures and religions. The winged disk is used as a motif in design for many logos and symbolic expressions. The letters V and W lend themselves to incorporation with the winged solar disk with their contours alone. So keeping the message in proper context when looking at the big picture is important while decoding. Seeing through the layers, especially with regard to usages of symbolism with multiple values simultaneously, is only possible within the spectrum and frame of reference provided by accurate context. In the spirit of all fairness, not all V's and W's that are used in design hold a value of 6 intentionally. While V's and W's will always hold a spiritual value of 6 in any use, discerning the intent behind a logo or use of imagery will be all nigh impossible. This is where critical analysis, astute observation, and spiritual discernment all need to coalesce into one surgically precise instrument. Identifying patterns will help shed some light on the intentional use of symbolism with carnal purpose. Patterns may even be able to enlighten us to the spiritual purposes behind the unintentional use of symbols within imagery as well. I don't know personally if this old Ford Thunderbird logo has those three V feathers there as a 666 intentionally or not. I can say there are three V's which do spiritually hold a value of 666 on the bird's neck regardless. I can also say that it appears that only some of these Ford Thunderbird logos have the painted V's as neck feathers, which makes it seem that much more deliberate. Which leads me to say that I can speculate reasons for and against purpose with intent or not in this instance 
all day long and never find myself any closer to the truth. Having said that, the Ford Motor Company does have some interesting dots to connect, but for now, I feel like you're probably getting the gist of what I'm saying. Do not jump to conclusions solely based on an outward appearance. If you pay close enough attention and find enough connectivity, there could be more to uncover, possibly. Connecting the dots is very much like peeling an onion. There will be many hidden depths and textures which need to be appreciated as we peel and reveal one layer at a time. In contrast, many symbols and design elements are a bit more universal. For example, the Volknut is an ancient symbol with its own native and intrinsic meanings, holding the V and W values as well, but from a totally different perspective. I believe symbols become much more interesting when they are seen overlapping with their meanings as they are being used across cultures. I find more spiritual significance in the universality of the meaning of such symbols, especially when they hold values in opposition to God. Often points of contact in connectivity are extremely subtle and shrouded in misdirection yet they can still be speculatively deciphered at the very least with a little bit of digging. The Volkna is currently used within neo-pagan groups and in the modern revival of heathenry. In Old Norse, the name translates to not of slain warriors. There is much speculation as to what the original meaning was behind this symbol. Ms. Davidson, considered one of the most thorough and reputable sources on Germanic mythology, had a theory on the meaning of the symbol based on her research I found to be quite interesting. Ms. Davidson wrote this about the Volkna in her book Gods and Myths of Northern Europe. Quote, This is thought to symbolize the power of the god to bind and unbind, mentioned in the poems and elsewhere. Odin had the power to lay bonds upon the mind so that men became helpless in battle, and he could also loosen the tensions of fear and strain by his gifts of battle madness, intoxication, and inspiration." End quote. The triple knot design interpreted as W's and V's meaning 666 is a little bit crazy. Then again, after hearing what the symbol could possibly mean and how many of the characteristics of Odin there sound a lot like Satan's powers over the lost, as well as the influences he holds in spiritual warfare, kind of makes me wonder. If you haven't seen my video Blind, please take some time to check it out. In that video I provide many scriptures which explain how we were all once blind, but now we see. You can see the parallels to what Miss Davidson had to say about the Volknut in regard to its relationship with Odin and his characteristics, and then what the Bible has to say about Satan's quality to bind or blind the minds of the lost for yourself. This can't really all be a coincidence, can it? I believe myself that the Volkswagen logo was originally inspired by the Volknut symbol. It's uncanny that this symbol is so prevalent regardless of intent behind the elements of design from instance to instance. Of course, many of the Nazi insignias had to go, but the Volkswagen company itself ultimately has not changed their logo much throughout the history of the organization. Keeping the intrinsic values in mind and then adding the implied values to symbolic language in addition to the context of its usage is critical in identifying patterns of true value. Another example of multiple overlapping symbols in one display can be found in Madonna's halftime show. Madonna used a plethora of symbolism that connected almost all of the symbols I've mentioned here so far and fashioned them for her own purposes of self-promotion. Here you can clearly see a winged sun disc.
as well as the overlapping V's and W's used as a multi-purpose symbol created for the album and tour specifically. Madonna has been flaunting esoteric imagery in her artistic expression since the beginning of her career. Illuminacho confirmed. Now once again, we have a pattern we can identify with the trail that we can follow in pointing out reoccurring symbols and themes. We must pay close attention to each occurrence in order to identify if a symbol's use is intentional or not. Valuable information can be collected based on who is using the symbolic language and for what purposes. We must always remember not all symbols have the same meanings to the different people and groups that are formulating and then implementing these expressions. Next, it's important to be aware of the fact that negative space is often visually exploited as a common area of oversight when the deployment of hidden symbolism is taking place. Most people do not process negative space consciously, which makes it an Achilles heel and a potential breach point by design for the mind. If you don't know what negative space is, let me give you a basic definition and a few examples here. Space is one of the fundamental elements to all art compositions. Negative space is basically the space that surrounds an object in an image. Utilizing negative space can have a major impact on many elements of design and composition. Negative space is usually as important as the object itself in creating balance within design. Negative space helps to define the boundaries of positive space and can also be the object, focal point, or area of expression itself. The ability for negative space to invoke certain areas of the mind consciously as well as sub and unconsciously makes it a very useful element of design to be aware of. Taking advantage of negative space in a clever way is a very effective marketing tactic, especially in logo and advertising design. Here are a few examples of how negative space can be used to create optical illusions or even hide information in plain sight. Can you see the swastika encoded in the negative space of the GE logo for the Nazi supporting company General Electric? There are many examples of negative space and how it can be used to convey or communicate a message. This is clearly an area worth paying close attention to as we understand symbology. Now I want to make it clear once again, not every triangle is an Illuminati pyramid. Not every image of a single eye is the eye of Lucifer. Not every letter W with wings or letter V with an overlap is satanic symbolism. Not every shape resembling a winged solar disk is a Hura Mazda worship or an ode to ancient Egypt. Not every group of swirlies is a 666 mark of the beast. Negative space is not evil, and neither is using it in design. Quote, We all see only that which we are trained to see. End quote. Robert Anton Wilson from Masks of the Illuminati. Before moving forward, I wanted to give an analogy embodying a universal truth in the expression of symbolic language across the board. The use of hidden symbols encoded within imagery for marketing or the occultic indoctrination through mass media is very similar in many respects to the manner in which gangs communicate. I would categorize the encoded communications in symbolism that we are analyzing as gang communications. The word gang, by definition, is an organized group of criminals, but its original Norse and Germanic meaning was journey or course, 
Then, as the Middle English was applied to the word, gang took on an additional value of way and or group of things or people going together. Now, if we decode or break down the word gang, keeping in mind the archaic and modern values of the word together, the result is definitively synonymous with communications that we are discovering by the groups using symbolism around us. A gang would be decoded as an organized group of people, usually criminal in activity or intent, going on a journey or taking the same course together with a purpose. Keep in mind the textbook definition of the word conspiracy is a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. According to Detective Wayne Caffey of the LAPD, gangs communicate for a purpose. Gangs operate on the street level, the jail level, and the federal and state prison levels, all of which require communicating in a number of different ways. Rap music, expressive dance, slang, tattoos, hand signs, graffiti, cyber banging, foreign and dead languages, as well as codes, are all common methods of gang communication. Some gang communications are unidentifiable to the uninitiated. The more popular these groups become in modern culture, the more exoteric the values are for the encoded communications. One example worth mentioning would be gang graffiti, which is basically a particular gang's calling card left behind, usually by spray painting symbols and logos on a particular area of public property. It serves many different purposes as to why they would do this. I want to read an article to you from the LA Police Department's official website. And the article is titled, Why Gang Graffiti is Dangerous, and it says this, quote, The purpose of gang graffiti is to glorify the gang. Gang graffiti is meant to create a sense of intimidation and may increase the sense of fear within a neighborhood. Gang members use graffiti to mark their territory or turf declare their allegiance to the gang, advertise a gang's status or power, and to challenge rivals. Graffiti is used to communicate messages between gangs using codes with common meaning. Of greater concern is the inherent violence associated with gang graffiti. When a neighborhood is marked with graffiti indicating territorial dominance, the entire area and its inhabitants become targets for violence. Anyone in the street or in their home is fair game for drive-by attacks by rival gang members. A rival gang identifies everyone in a neighborhood as a potential threat. Consequently, innocent residents are often subjugated to gang violence by the mere presence of graffiti in their neighborhood. End quote. Gangs will use graffiti and hand signs to communicate mostly. These hand signs and tagged messages are inside communications to those that can even comprehend the message system. The representations of symbolic value in gangs and their methods of communication are extraordinarily complex. This is a prime example of information being implemented in symbolic expression exoterically with an intent and a purpose for those that can decipher the messages esoterically. As we can see from the LAPD's information, a person is in constant danger with an imminent threat of violence whether a person is initiated or not so long as they are in the territory of the ruling gang. Another element worth mentioning is that the Umbrella Street Gangs, known as the Bloods and Crips, each with numerous offshoots, both have their own characteristic symbols with their intended values. For instance, the Crips are blue and the Bloods are red. Each of these two gangs has their own terminology and signage to glorify and represent themselves. The Bloods and Crips both use the five and six pointed stars as symbols with their own intrinsic street level meanings. The gang's interpretations and designs of these symbols do not exclude the addition of the spiritual values held within these stars. Consider for a moment everything we have discussed so far in this video. 
we're looking at symbolism in order to understand the semiotic relationships between these symbols and how we can and are to interpret and understand their expressions. The way a street gang communicates and operates is no different than how the higher initiates are communicating and operating. Operations, goals, and territories are just partitioned out and controlled differently. Different rulers asserting dominance and authority by influence or coercion in areas of control to achieve a desired outcome, that's all. So we can look at symbols from the perspective of them either acting as coded messages between fellow initiates, messages or warnings to other rival groups, or programmed messages for the masses. In this video I've mentioned 666 and the Mark of the Beast multiple times already. So let's take a look at that symbol for a minute. The number 666 is a relevant symbol to be familiar with because of its usage and contextual value scripturally. Here are the most prominent scriptures referencing the Mark of the Beast listed in sequential order. Number 1. Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 through 18 And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Number 2. Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Number 3, Revelation chapter 15 verse 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Number 4. Revelation chapter 16 verses 1 and 2. And I heard a great voice out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Number 5. Revelation chapter 19 verse 19 through 21 And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. What do these scriptures mean? and how do they relate to what we are discussing. In summary, the mark of the beast is a mark without which you will not be able to buy or sell. 
all will be forced to take this mark and the mark will be applied in the right hand or in the forehead. Taking this mark will be a form of worship towards the Antichrist or Beast, as some will be deceived into taking this mark, but unfortunately many will do so willingly. All who take the mark will receive the wrath of God. There are two beasts. The first beast out of the sea is the Antichrist, and the second beast out of the earth is the false prophet performing miracles. The false prophet will set up images representing the Antichrist to be worshipped, and then he will require all to take the mark of the beast. So, we know that the Antichrist or beast is a man and that he has a mark. This mark of the beast will represent the Antichrist symbolically, or his name, or the number of his name. Now we are told that the number of the beast is the number of a man, reinforcing everything that has just been stated so far. We are also told to count his number, 600 plus 3 score and or plus 6. A score is 20, so 3 score would be a total of 60. Now when you put all this together, this would be 600 plus 60 plus 6, totaling a sum of, you guessed it, 666 or 666. Commonly referred to as the mark of the beast itself, 666 is automatically a symbol of opposition and rebellion towards God. The number 7 can represent completion and perfection, so the number 6 being one less than 7 may symbolize mankind or the number of man. The number 666 could symbolize the imperfection of man, possibly overlapping in value with the triple number for the unholy trinity of the dragon, the antichrist, and the false prophet. Now that we understand better the biblical significance of the symbolic values for 666, we see examples like the monster and Disney company logo designs in a much more revealing light. The enemy has been using defiant imagery and symbolism from the start in open rebellion to God. The enemy is using these companies and their symbolic imagery as a vehicle for mocking God to all exposed to these encoded blasphemies. Well, as we grow more aware, we will naturally be more sensitive to what we're exposed to and therefore find more of what it is that we have seen. Quote, you're only a victim to the degree of what your perception allows. End quote. Shannon L. Alder. Here is a painting from the hospital my daughter was born in. Now God brought this image to my attention to notify me that an act of war was signaled as I walked by this painting. Many may interpret these aspects of design in artistic expression within the painting differently than I do. To me, there's blatantly a 666 there. In fact, this painting was taken down by the hospital due to enough complaints of it being a literal 666 painting. If you personally don't see the 666 or feel it was put there purposefully, check this out. Here is a cross from my home in Texas. It has a funky southwestern color pattern with some strange designs. Do you notice anything peculiar though? Hmm. With the slightest degree of spiritual discernment, anyone can detect the strange designs formed in a pattern. This pattern is clearly identifiable as a 666. Now expressive interpretation from an art perspective would explain away these aspects of design using words like contrast, focal point, balance, motion, but all of those elements and principles align themselves to accentuate the focus of the 666 regardless. I'm not saying the artist of the painting or cross put 666 on their works of art with the sole purpose of blaspheming or rebelling against God. I am saying that rather it was their intention or not, the 666 is right there on both artworks either way. 
I am saying that the value 666 holds spiritually cannot be dismissed in either case, just because it may not have been placed there by evil intentional design. This is another set of examples where, regardless of what speculation suggests in regard to the intent or purpose, the observation holds true nonetheless. When we find suggestions of connectivity or patterns of usage, we begin to see a broader scope and theme. This broader scope and awareness of theme help to move our perception of the use of symbolism beyond happenstance or mere suggestion, but towards an understanding of purposeful intention and everything in between. Regarding the use of symbolism as serving a purpose or having a meaning, regardless of manufactured material design or spiritual intended purposes, we find ourselves less likely to be persuaded, sub and unconsciously. Quote, Lies sound like facts to those who've been conditioned to misrecognize the truth. End quote. Deshaun Stokes. I want to stress once again, not all swirlies are encoded 666s combining together to make the mark of the beast. If a person looks in nature, it can be easy to find 666 from curling or twisting things. Does that mean the devil is in the grapevine because we can find three curling tendrils making a 666? Or is this spiral staircase here an encoded 666? We cannot abandon all logic and reason when we're identifying symbolic language and analyzing collected observations and data. Language is ever-changing and, at times, almost seemingly alive, and the language of symbolism is no exception. Having a flexible understanding of what it is that we believe we know is critically important because we may have to reshape our paradigm often. Quote, Because vision appears so effortless, we're like fish challenged to understand water. End quote. David Eagleman from Incognito, The Secret Lives of the Brain. I want to show you some things I found to be uncanny. Here we can see an extremely common example of an encoded 666 in CERN's infamous logo. Of course this logo could be explained away as the track for the super colliders at the facility, but as far as I'm concerned, especially considering what CERN is doing, the value of the 666 in their logo doesn't feel like much of a stretch. Again, here we have the Trilateral Commission logo, which also has an encoded 666. The Trilateral Commission is an international organization offering private membership by invitation only. I wanted to read to you a sliver of what the organization has to say about itself on their own official website. Quote, the commission was originally created to bring together experienced leaders within the private sector to discuss issues of global concern at a time when communication and cooperation between Europe, North America, and Asia were lacking. When the first triennium of the Trilateral Commission was launched in 1973, the most immediate purpose was to draw together, at a time of considerable friction among governments, the highest level unofficial group possible to look together at key common problems facing our three areas, the quote, growing interdependence, end quote, that so impressed the founders of the Trilateral Commission in the early 70s has deepened into, quote, globalization, end quote, end of all quotes. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it if this was one group with a system in place that will help to usher in a one world government or new world order subtitled globalism. Seeing a logo exploiting the negative space in order to conceal a 666 fashioned and designed by an organization that has all that to say about itself is right in line with all that we've been discussing. Another example in similar fashion is the Google Chrome logo. It appears as if the Chrome logo specifically has the 666 encoded in it by design from the get-go. Now we can't say if it was on purpose, with intent, or not at this stage, but many of you have seen this example by now, I'm sure. It looks remarkably similar to the CERN logo as well as the Trilateral Commission's logo. 
For the sake of time, I won't go through all the examples I know of or could find that have this same style of expression and symbolism, but for now, suffice to say that these are not isolated occurrences. I cannot tell you how long I used Google Chrome and how often I saw the Chrome logo before I realized or identified the encoded imagery. It didn't matter to me if Google put the 666 there on accident or not. The WWW, or World Wide Web, another encoded 666, was being accessed by Chrome, which carried multiple 666 connections all together just in that. Now this is where I begin to get curious and look a little bit deeper. Look at the Google Hangouts logo for the app. I use Hangouts to operate the live stream for prayer call and to keep in touch with people. I can't tell you how long I looked at this app and logo design before I saw for myself an encoded 666. This to me was an epiphany style moment of decoding. I don't know why, but I had always felt odd about the Hangouts logo. Now when this symbolism was revealed and made clear to me, the hidden message became exposed and my sensitivity and uneasiness made much more sense regarding the logo. Now as with Disney, we see a pattern emerging with Google here. Normally you could make a nominal case for one or two organized but separate uses as in this case since they're such big companies. But what I'm about to show you closes the door of possibility for me to give any benefit of any doubt to the company of Google. I don't even have to explain to you the inner workings of the Google company to know that just as they have a great potential to serve and be helpful to humanity as a whole, they have major influence, power, and money to do great harm to humanity in the not so distant future as well. Some people equate Google in real life to the fictional doomsday tech company Cyberdyne Systems from the Terminator series. I may delve further into this on my Mandela Effect follow-up video soon to come, we'll see. But the last example from Google straight away gives me the willies. This was something my mind took notice of in the periphery, but couldn't decipher completely for some time. In most of these cases, it takes flipping an image backwards, upside down, or turning it inside out, which is the same as reversing the negative space, in order to see what there is to see. This is the logo for Google Play. Google Play is formerly known as the Android Market and is the official app store for all Android operating system users. The slogan is, get it on which is a slang way of referring to having sexual relations or referring to physical altercation in the form of violent combat. Notice the designed separation between the slogan words Get It On and the actual app name Google Play. Of course, this is self-identifying marketing which is telling us in the very logo itself that no matter what it is, we can get it on Google Play. Another angle of approach would be to understand that the break between font size and text alignment is cleverly designed. This strategy of design accentuates the fact that the whole message can be taken at once or broken down into the two written component parts visually speaking. But that's not the primary focal point in my opinion, yet well worth mentioning as an example of just another way the sub and unconscious mind is provocatively being influenced under the radar in marketing design. The real thing I wanted to draw your attention to was the Google Play Play Button logo. Most play buttons are like we see here, a sideways triangle. That symbol has become pretty universal as representing play in the electronic age. This Google Play button logo has the sideways triangle with the Google colors. She does a lot of daydreaming, imagining herself as the extrovert that she is not. She goes over and over little events in her life, reliving her successes and suffering through her failures all over again. Now, what if I showed you the sigil of Lucifer, or seal of Satan, depending on whom you ask? And what if it matched the Google Play button logo precisely?
Here, just like the painting in the hospital, if we rotate the Google logo one 90 degree turn to our right, the sigil and the logo match up precisely. I colored in the sigil of Lucifer to match the Google colors, just to show you how similar the two symbols actually are. I even couldn't help but to notice the overlapping V and W shape missing on the Google logo, but present in the bottom portion of the sigil. What are the odds? This combined with all the other encoded symbolism used by Google to me supports strongly that there is a spiritual agenda at the very least going on with this company. I believe there's a strong possibility this is all rebelliously done with deliberate purpose in opposition to God openly. You decide for yourself. Quote, The question is not what you look at, but what you see. It is only necessary to behold the least fact or phenomenon, however familiar, from a point a hair's breadth aside from our habitual path or routine, to be overcome enchanted by its beauty and significance. End quote. Henry David Thoreau. Finishing off this introduction, let me give you a final rundown on a very common example used frequently in nonverbal communication we should all be familiar with by now. The symbolic hand sign, commonly called the AOK, -okay, is made by putting the pointer finger in contact with the thumb, creating a circle, and then extending the remaining three fingers. It can be used by the right or left hand, and of course, the most common Western interpretation in body language, from a North American view, is that this symbol stands for the figure of speech that something is A-OK, -okay, or as a confirmatory sign that something is good or satisfactory. If you thought this hand sign was that simple to interpret or understand, you are mistaken. Just in numerical value alone, this hand symbol has more than one meaning internationally. In the international sport of basketball, the AOK -okay hand sign can be seen on a regular basis. One way of celebrating or taunting in the sport of basketball is by making this hand sign to show a successfully made three-point score, while getting back into position defensively down court. The three-point shot is extremely difficult to make and is much less common to see than the typical two-point shots. In some instances, this hand sign can mean zero as a numerical value in many international countries, and it can also represent a sign for coin or money in some cultures as well. I was personally surprised to find out that this gesture is frequently used in many derogatory ways around the world too. In some regions, flashing that sign at a person would be the same as expressing that a person doesn't amount to much and is a loser or a zero. This symbol may also be calling someone drunk if the person making the gesture puts their nose through the O, simulating the motion of drinking out of a bottle. This symbolic hand gesture also has its meanings and uses in Eastern Buddhist cultures as well as in the Hindu practices of yoga. The concepts and representative values are positive in these applications of this form of symbolism. However, this gesture and symbolism is not intrinsically as universally accepted and well received internationally as I had originally thought. This hand symbol is definitely not A-OK -okay in many cultures across the world, where it holds a much more sinister interpretive value hidden behind the gesture and what expressive symbolism it is meant to convey. This symbol can represent a vulgar insult in the form of a slang expression meant to refer to the person as being an anus. The symbol can also be used as a literal representation of and reference to the anus. This A-OK -okay sign can also be a reference to homosexuality, pedophilia, or anal sex. These values are generally more applicable if the person using this symbolic gesture is looking through the circle or hole they are creating. Could this A-OK -okay hand symbol, given its wide use by many industry insiders, be a FUBU or for us, by us message? Just a thought to consider. 
Having all of these values in mind, we must now consider that this hand sign also has an encoded 666 within its symbolic contours. The circle would be the body of the numbers, and each of the three extended fingers would make their own number 6, which can make this hand sign an overt triple 6. I'm sure many of you have heard or seen this sign referenced as being a 666, and while at times it may intentionally be true, we find that this is a very common gesture naturally in body language. This hand sign does not just represent all the values we have mentioned thus far, but it can also have a full spectrum of meanings within body language alone. Body language overlaps the language of symbolism often in many of its expressions. When we identify it, this specific example of symbolism needs to be more thoroughly scrutinized before drawing conclusive determinations. All possible observations and data need to be gathered and compiled into one relative context before trying to find value or meaning behind symbolic expression. For instance, the conductor of an orchestra often conducts with the aid of a baton. It can often be seen that the baton is held, at times, in the same manner as the hand sign we know symbolically. It is no stretch of the imagination that a conductor at times, in the absence of a baton, may still use this same gesture and hand sign. This position for the hand is a pretty natural and common position to be honest if you stop and think about it. I mean, hardly any of us have ever conducted an orchestra or used a conductor's baton. But consider that this gesture is often used to emphasize a point or to display how we feel about a quality. In conversation or gesturing in body language, this hand position can be noticed more frequently than we realize. The use of this hand sign or the occurrence of it by happenstance doesn't always carry the symbolic meanings from instance to instance. As another example, I'm pretty sure most all of us have had the experience of being in the process of eating a mouthful of food and then being asked if the food is good or if we like it. If you don't want to be rude or simply can't speak with a mouthful of food, it's common to use the A-OK -okay hand sign to indicate it either tastes good or to convey that we do like the food. There's no satanic message in that exchange, just as there isn't usually a satanic message being conducted with the baton in the 666 hand symbol. Context is critical in determining with any accuracy why or how a symbol is being used, especially in conjunction with body language. It is known this gesture can also be a symbolic reference to smoking pot. This sign mimics the act of smoking a doobie and can be a gesture to initiate smoking or referencing having smoked. This symbol is very commonly used in this type of reference by smokers and non-smokers alike. Quote, In spiritual moments, we nearly perceive a grand, divine conspiracy of interconnectedness between us and everything. End quote. Bryant McGill. Even as I'm working on this project now, a Danish cooking show that just happens to be on in the background just showed the female chef doing the cooking gesture this hand sign close to her hip. I just happened to notice as she did it that she was doing it to stress what she was saying in affirmation to how good her creation was that the show had just featured. Now this happens more than we realize and we have to keep things within reason based on context as we process symbolism. I feel this introduction has communicated the primary points I needed to establish as our foundation before we move forward in this video series. I have shown just a few examples to use as visual aids in discussing this topic from the angle most of us have entered the discussion from. I will share a bit more of my art background in this series which serves as my foundation and experience decoding and encoding in my own art these types of symbolic communicative expressions. 
I also think that many of the people who come across this information without any spiritual foundation and discernment will often over-rationalize in order to justify an apathy towards the content in question. Rather than see, most people would prefer to find a logical explanation behind this kind of symbolism. Let me give you one last example to look at and ponder before I give you my own closing thoughts. Quote, Reality is only as true as it is perceived. Reality does not change. How it is perceived does. End quote. Murad S. Shah. See if this sounds like a few people you may know. You know, I've seen President Trump use this 666 AOK hand sign many times. If you think about it, Trump's used a pen to sign a great number of checks. It wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility that Trump really makes that hand gesture out of habit from holding a pen and signing all those checks. It makes a lot more sense that Trump will be holding his imaginary pen like the conductor of the orchestra. And you know, everybody uses pins. Maybe all those people using the 666 hand sign really are A-OK, -okay, and they're just mixing up holding a pin instead of flashing satanic gang signs. They do say the pin is mightier than the sword. Illuminacho confirmed. You decide for yourself what makes more sense. A-OK, -okay, 666, or I'm just holding my invisible pin. So in conclusion, as you watch my lame photo chops here to give the fair and balanced approach in the way of visual aids, I'll leave you with some parting thoughts. God gives us the eyes to see and ears to hear. We shouldn't mix that up with what it is we believe we perceive. I believe in letting the information speak for itself. I believe that a pattern is significant. I believe that nothing is trivial and that value is to be found in the smallest of things. Symbolism is one of the languages of God's creation. Symbolism is also one of the most effective communication delivery systems for the enemy. This is another example of the enemy stealing and perverting creation in order to bend it to his purposes. I think of symbolism and decoding as being one of God's spiritual wind talkers. Wind Talkers were a group of Native American code talkers for the United States military during World War II. Since Navajo was a language that was unknown outside of the United States, it was used as a code language during wartime. The World War II Navajo code talkers were so top secret, their very existence wasn't declassified until decades after the war. Imagine us, God's people, as being spiritual when talkers for these end times. Pretty amazing notion if you just stop to consider it for a moment. Quote, to see through the illusion of duality, remember that fear and darkness have no substance in themselves, for they do not indicate the presence of a second universal force, but are only names given to the one light unperceived. End quote. Eric Mikhail Leventhal. I feel more suited to look and see when it comes to spiritual decoding of symbolism, not only because of spiritual discernment, but also because of my art and design background. Symbology 101 here was a great start in not really sharing anything all that new, but grouping together many obvious examples of symbolism. Not only grouping some prime and obvious examples, but seeing them from a slightly different perspective. Hopefully this video, along with the ones to come, will serve a role in helping to take a moderate and tempered approach in trying to interpret and understand symbolic expressions within their appropriate connotations and contexts. A great disservice is done to the search for truth when one stops short and just lays blankets of blame on the devil. More often than not, the innocent happening of these symbolic expressions in many of their forms hold little intended significance. Sometimes these symbolisms are used on purpose still with little significance. Other times these symbols are used innocently with no intended hidden purpose but hold deep spiritual or subliminal significance. 
The entire spectrum is really in play when we understand symbolism in design from a material and spiritual perspective as far as significance is concerned. Quote, of course, I'm not quite ready to forsake all the products of society just yet. I have my clothes, my books, etc., but more and more I can see myself leaving much of the rest behind, leaving their makers and the crucible from which they proceed. If at times, after all, I might benefit by the rays of the sun, must I seek also to reside in its nuclear core? End quote. Mark X from Citations, A Brief Anthology. I truly want you to consider some of these examples we've analyzed and begin to find some symbols to analyze of your own. Please feel free to ask me about any symbol you may have questions about that you would like me to discuss. In future videos within the Symbology series, I'll go much deeper into thorough detail about many different and particular symbols. For now, I feel like we have plenty of information to absorb and meditate on. I also want to make it clear that this information I'm sharing is in no way meant to glorify the enemy or the unfruitful works of darkness, but this is my way of exposing the darkness and reproving its intended purposes. Quote, we know there are colors in the spectrum untranslatable to our eyes, sounds beyond the range of our hearing, sensations beyond the tolerance of taste or touch. What else is there that we might be missing? Could it be that we ourselves only ever really experience the mere gist of our own lives? End quote. Attributed to F. L. Vanderson by Mort W. Lumsen from Citations, A Brief Anthology. Remember, if you take the red pill, we go deeper in the quest for truth, waking up to the spiritual matrix all around us. But if you take the blue pill, you're going to wake up and realize it's all only because of the pin, after all. This is Timio signing off for Symbology 101. Go with God, having eyes to see and ears to hear. Keep fighting the good fight, having not a spirit of fear. Take care guys, until next time. God bless and keep you all.